Christopher Walken's name is synonymous with talent, mystery, and a touch of the unexpected. Walken's mesmerizing performances in celebrated films, as well as his legendary cameos, <laughs> have cemented his place in Hollywood lore. However, there are many hidden stories about this mysterious performer that exist outside of the spotlight. Join us as we explore Christopher Walken's intriguing world, including his phobias, oddities, and the stories that have shaped his famous position in the entertainment industry. Early Life Christopher Walken was born on March 31, 1943, in New York City, and grew up with a Scottish and German heritage. His mother, Rosalie, came from Glasgow, Scotland, while his father, Paul, was from Gelsenkirk in Germany. They ran Walken's Bakery in Astoria, Queens. Walken was apparently destined for the big screen. In reality, he and his brothers, Kenneth and Glenn, began acting as children on television in the 1950s. Showbiz ran in the family, most likely influenced by their mother's own desires for celebrity. However, it wasn't until Walken was in his teens that he discovered his ultimate inspiration, Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. At the age of 15, Walken's life changed when a lover showed him a magazine portrait of Presley. Talk about love at first sight. He was entranced, characterizing Presley as resembling a Greek god. And when he saw him on TV, the game was over. Walken was hooked. He even went so far as to replicate Presley's classic hairdo, which he has maintained ever since. After his eventful youth, Walken decided to give college a go by enrolling at Hofstra University. However, after only one year, he landed his big break as Clayton Dutch Miller in an off-Broadway revival of Best Foot Forward with none other than Liza Minnelli. Talk about diving headfirst into the spotlight. Walken's rise to prominence was not typical. Before appearing on the big screen, he trained as a dancer at the Washington Dance Studio, polishing his skills before moving on to dramatic stage roles and eventually film Rise to Stardom. Walken began his acting career as an extra in different TV show episodes during the golden age of television. Yes, he was dabbling in show business long before he became a well-known actor. However, it wasn't until he appeared in a comedy with Martin and Lewis on the Colgate Comedy Hour that he decided to pursue acting full-time. He first tasted regular TV roles in the series Wonderful John Acton, where he played Kevin Acton. Back then, he was known as Ronnie Walken. For the next few years, Walken was everywhere, appearing on television and shining bright on stage, too. Walken starred in Lanford Wilson's Lemon Sky in 1970 and won a Drama Desk Award for his exceptional performance. Talk about creating waves in the theater world. But Walken wasn't done there. He had his sights set on the silver screen. His major break came in 1971 with Sidney Lumet's The Anderson Tapes, in which he co-starred with Sean Connery and Diane Cannon. Just a year later, he won his first starring role in The Mind Snatchers, a science fiction film in which he played a psychopathic soldier stationed in Germany. In the 1980s, Walken continued to make his imprint in Hollywood. He demonstrated his flexibility as an actor in films ranging from contentious to action-packed, such as Heaven's Gate and The Dogs of War. But it was Walken's tap-dancing striptease in Pennies from Heaven that sparked the most interest. Who knew he possessed such moves? In 1982, he captivated viewers as a socially awkward but skilled actor in Who Am I This Time, demonstrating that there's more to him than meets the eye. And don't forget his scary performance as a psychic in The Dead Zone. Walken's resume continued to increase, and in 1985 he portrayed a James Bond villain in A View to a Kill. With his blonde hair and threatening demeanor, he brought Max Zorin to life in striking ways. Who can forget the scene-stealing moment in True Romance? That Sicilian scene is still spoken about today, with critics giving it high ratings. However, one of his most notable performances was in Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, where he played a Vietnam veteran named Captain Coons. Success in Hollywood Walken made his Broadway debut in James Joyce's The Dead in the year 2000, demonstrating his acting talent and singing ability. The performance received terrific reviews and even won the Tony Award for Best Book for a Musical. What a great win! But Walken did not stop there. 
Spike Jonze directed Fatboy Slim's Weapon of Choice music video in 2001, and he impressed fans. The video became an instant classic, winning six MTV awards and being named Best Video of All Time. And get this, Walken not only danced in the video, but he helped choreograph the routines. That same year, Walken demonstrated his comedic abilities in David Spade's Joe Dirt and captivated audiences as an eccentric film director in America's Sweethearts. In addition, he took on Shakespeare in the loose film adaption Scotland, Pennsylvania, demonstrating that he is capable of anything. In 2010, Walken returned to Broadway in Martin McDonough's A B Handing in Spokane, getting a Tony Award nomination for his outstanding performance. He didn't just stick to the stage, he also voiced the successful NBC sitcom 30 Rock, lending his typical wit to the show. However, one of Walken's most memorable roles of the decade was in Stand Up Guys, where he co-starred with Al Pacino and Alan Arkin as geriatric gangsters looking for one final hurrah. And don't forget his role as King Louis in Disney's The Jungle Book. Who wouldn't want to hear Walken sing as an orangutan? Fast forward to 2024, and Walken remains at the top of his game. He played Emperor Shaddam in Dune Part 2 and received great accolades for his role. In the words of Slash Film, it's a treat to watch Walken work. He shows up, delivers his ominous lines with a whisper, and wipes the floor with anyone he's acting against. High praise for a true Hollywood legend. He hates children. Christopher and Georgianne met in 1963 while attending a West Side Story production at the theater. What a romantic scene. Sparks flew quickly between them, and they fell madly in love. Christopher was smitten with Georgianne's talent, hard ethic, and appearance. He referred to her as a fox, and understood from once that she was exceptional. Georgianne felt the same way about Christopher. She recognized his ability initially, and thought he was destined for greatness. They became inseparable, establishing a solid friendship that lasted more than 60 years. But hey, even the strongest couples require some alone time now and then. Christopher once stated that spending time apart helped improve their marriage. Perhaps absence truly makes the heart grow fonder. Six years after their initial meeting, Christopher and Georgianne married in a wedding that was likely as sweet and modest as their love story. At the commencement of their marriage, Georgianne decided to take a break from her own acting and dance career to support Christopher while he followed his Hollywood goals. She was willing to make the sacrifice, and it paid off in multiple ways. You see, while Christopher rose to fame on the big screen, their decision not to have children gave him the opportunity to devote himself entirely to his trade. Acting was not just a job for him, it was his passion and purpose. With over a hundred films and television series to his credit, his dedication to his craft has paid off. But what about parenthood? Well, Christopher has been relatively open about his decision not to have children. He's grateful for the flexibility to pursue his work without additional duties. And let's be honest, he isn't the sort to exchange his writing for soccer games and PTA meetings. According to him, acting is what he truly loves, and he wouldn't have it any other way. Involved in a mystery, Natalie Wood's untimely demise remains one of Hollywood's most enduring mysteries, and at the heart of it all is none other than Christopher Walken. The incident occurred on the night of November 29, 1981, on board the yacht Splendor near Catalina Island. Natalie, her husband, Robert Wagner, and Christopher Walken were all in agreement. However, what happened that fatal night remains a mystery. Natalie and Walken were making the movie Brainstorm together at the time, so spending time together off-site was not unusual. However, according to sources, the nighttime turned gloomy. There were rumors of tension, erratic conduct, and excessive alcohol consumption. Walken has mainly avoided discussing the events of that night, refusing to go into detail. In a rare interview with People magazine in 1986, he said, It's a conversation I won't have. And in 1997, he told Playboy that he didn't know what happened, but suspected it was a fatal accident. The medical examiner officially deemed Natalie's death an unintentional drowning, and Walken publicly agreed. However, when Vanity Fair investigated the issue deeper, they discovered different accounts from the yacht's captain, Dennis Davern, and Walken himself. According to Davern, Natalie passed away due to two days of tension, 
jealousy, and heavy drinking. He stated that Wagner's anger turned into wrath, forcing Natalie to attempt to flee the yacht. It's a haunting story that provides a disturbing picture of the circumstances leading up to her untimely demise. Despite these discoveries, Walken has kept quiet about the entire event. He has refused to comment further on the topic, leaving many questions unanswered and the facts still unknown. As a result, the mystery surrounding Natalie Wood's demise continues to stalk Hollywood, with Walken's involvement in the tragedy adding to the intrigue. What exactly happened that night on the Splendor may never be entirely known, but one thing is sure, it's a story that has fascinated the world for decades and is unlikely to be forgotten anytime soon. His strange style. You know, that distinctive cadence that has become synonymous with his name? There's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Walken's specific way of communicating isn't just an act, it's how he communicates in real life. Walken was born and raised in Queens, New York, surrounded by immigrants, including his own parents, who spoke with a thick accent. According to Walken, many of his neighbors and customers at his parents' bakery did not speak English as their first language. So, from an early age, he acquired the rhythm of conversation in which people paused and looked for the proper words. It's a rhythm thing, Walken stated in an interview with Tracy Smith. People who speak English where they are must pause and think of the appropriate word. And I think it rubbed off. So, Walken's distinct style of speech has been ingrained in him since infancy, formed by his eclectic upbringing. But here's the catch. Walken doesn't think any of those renowned impressions of him sound like the genuine thing. Nope, not even close. When it comes to his own writing, he isn't scared to make modifications. In fact, he has been known to eliminate punctuation and restructure phrases to fit his own pace and style. I have to do it the only way I know how, Walken once stated, commenting on his approach to acting and his determination to be true to himself, even if it meant disagreeing with writers and directors. Not only is Walken's speech unorthodox, but so is his writing. He does not own a computer or a cell phone and prefers to use pen and paper. His handwritten letters are entirely in capital letters, without punctuation, and frequently consist of only one sentence. And forget about elegant cursive. Walken never learned it. So, Christopher Walken's distinct style shines through whether he's on television giving one of his classic speeches or writing a note to a friend. It exemplifies the importance of remaining true to oneself in a world where conformity is frequently the norm. He is unambitious. While actors such as Daniel Day-Lewis are recognized for their meticulous preparation and immersion in character, Walken takes a pretty different approach. In a 2012 interview with The Guardian, Walken stated that he never totally immerses himself in a role. No matter what character I'm playing, it's me, he explained. I'm the only person in my life that I can refer to. Unlike method actors who entirely embrace their characters, Walken sees himself as a performer, contributing a piece of himself to each part. So, what is Walken's preparation method like? Well, it's surprisingly simple. He focuses on memorizing. Yes, that's right. Walken goes to his kitchen to get into character, reads the lines, and determines which rhythm works best for him. It's a method that draws on his first love, dancing, and he's kept with it throughout his career. Even when it comes to learning songs for roles like his portrayal of King Louis in The Jungle Book, Walken keeps things casual. He said that he memorized the songs by simply going around the house and singing them. But don't let the simplicity fool you. Walken has described this element of the job as a tedious, agonizing chore. In fact, if given the option, he would much instead use cue cards. It's a refreshingly straightforward approach in an industry recognized for its complex methodologies and techniques. While some may spend months diving into their characters' psyches, Walken remains authentic, depending on his own instincts and talents to bring his roles to life. And hey, it is working nicely for him instead. Did he change his name? Did you know Christopher Walken is not his actual name? According to reports, he was born Ronald and named after the British actor Ronald Coleman. However, it wasn't until later in his career that he took the name Christopher. So, why the change? It all started during his early days as a dancer when he performed at a nightclub alongside Belgian cabaret dancer Monique Van Voren. She introduced him as Christopher one night, 
and the name stuck. But don't worry, his friends and family still recognize him as Ronnie. Let's move on to another fantastic fact about Walken, his remarkable dancing abilities. While many people remember him for his classic film performances, his early training in dance is less well known. If you want to witness his moves in action, watch Fatboy Slim's Weapon of Choice music video. Trust us, it's epic. But here's the thing, Walken's dancing origins are deep, and they have also influenced his approach to acting. According to accounts, his preparation for parts frequently includes finding rhythm in the lines, which taps into his passion for dance. Whether he's memorizing lines in the kitchen or studying songs for a film like The Jungle Book, Walken's approach is the same. It's all about getting the right beat. Did you know that Walken began his career as Ronnie before becoming Christopher? Yes, it is true. Previously known as Ronnie Walken, a chance encounter with Monique Van Voren altered everything. She opted to call him Christopher after their nightclub performance, and he decided to keep it throughout his professional career. But don't worry, his friends and family still recognize him as Ronnie. Let us not forget Walken's tremendous flexibility as an actor. While some actors fully immerse themselves in their roles, Walken takes a different approach. In an interview, he stated that no matter what persona he plays, it is always him beneath it all. He is a performer through and through, drawing on his own personality to bring characters to life on screen. Despite his Hollywood stardom, Walken remains refreshingly grounded. He isn't embarrassed to confess that dancing in the Weapon of Choice video was a chore, and he'd prefer to sing while walking around his house than rehearse songs for a movie. It only goes to show that even a great actor like Walken has unique peculiarities and preferences when it comes to his R Does He Steal Clothes. Walken's dress selections aren't typical of a Hollywood star. He has a reputation for stealing clothes. Walken raised eyebrows in 2010 when he showed up to an interview with The Independent wearing the identical jacket he wore on screen in the 1990s show, The Comfort of Strangers. Walken did not mince words when asked about it. He acknowledged removing the jacket from the movie set. But here's the kicker. Walken didn't do this just once. In fact, Walken admitted, I never buy clothes. Instead, every time he works on a movie, he removes all of his clothing from the set. That's correct. He's a self-proclaimed clothing thief. And get this. The movie studios don't even provide him with clothes. He helps himself. But Walken's reputation for snatching clothing dates back far deeper. When he was filming Batman Returns, the clothes department took precautions and emptied out his dressing room while he was shooting his final scene. Talk about staying one step ahead. By the time Walken finished filming, all of the outfits he was interested in were long gone. As he says, they saw me coming. So, what's the problem with Walken's clothing obsession? It appears that he loves the simplicity of obtaining his outfit directly from the movie shoot. Plus, it's a signature gesture for the renowned actor. After all, who else can boast they've worn their movie costumes in public? However, Walken's dress choices aren't only about comfort. They also reflect his distinct personality. Walken is known for his eccentric sense of humor and unique approach to life, and his habit of snatching clothes adds another layer of mystery to his enigmatic persona. His Strange Fears Despite his intense look and memorable performances, Walken has a few phobias that may surprise you. The first item on the list is horses. Yes, you heard that correctly. Walken is frightened of horses. And it's not just that he can't ride them. He's afraid to even get on one. In an interview with Total Film, Walken admitted that he is scared of riding horses, citing previous incidents where they had gone away with him. Even in Sleepy Hollow, where he looks to be riding a horse, Walken is actually riding a mechanical horse. Talk about confronting your worries in the most creative manner imaginable. But it's not just horses that make Walken nervous. He is also not a lover of driving and would rather have someone else take the wheel. In fact, when he visits London, he rarely leaves his hotel since he struggles to cross the street and navigate the city's traffic. According to Walken, he simply cannot get used to glancing in the opposite direction when crossing the street, so he prefers to stay still. Plus, he dislikes crowded areas like airports and prefers to avoid them entirely. Walken's anxieties include swimming and flying, among others. He told The Guardian that he will only swim or fly if there are no other options. 
Walken grew up in the city and never had much opportunity to swim or fly, so he's simply not interested in the idea. He prefers to stick with what he knows and is comfortable with, even if it means losing out on some adventures. He loves animals. That's correct. Beneath the rugged appearance and renowned performances is a soft place for furry and feathered pals. Walken is a self-proclaimed animal lover who enjoys simply viewing nature outside the window of his Connecticut country house. Walken invites all species, great and little, to his ranch, from deer and turkeys to birds and snakes. It's apparent that he finds comfort and satisfaction in viewing nature's splendor right outside his door. But Walken's love for animals extends beyond simply enjoying their company. He's also an outspoken supporter of animal rights, expressing his distaste for caged animals in zoos, circuses, and animal entertainment. In an interview with Parade, Walken stated that the world would be better off without these forms of confinement, in which animals are frequently exposed to terrible living conditions and exploited for human pleasure. Walken has not only spoken out against animal confinement, but he has also taken action by sponsoring organizations such as the Best Friends Animal Society's Celebrity Campaign. He strongly believes in the importance of adoption, regardless of where the animals come from. In reality, Walken has welcomed a furry friend into his home, a cat simply known as The Cat. This loving stray appeared on Walken's doorstep one day with her babies, and she quickly became a favorite member of the family. Walken affectionately refers to his cats as children, showing a strong affinity and gratitude for their company. In Walken's opinion, his cat has a beautiful existence, and he's even quipped that if reincarnation exists, he wouldn't mind returning as his own cat. After all, what could be better than a life full of love, affection, and plenty of catnaps? He used to tame lions. You might remember him as the renowned actor with a distinctive voice, but did you know Walken's career began in an unexpected place? In an honest interview with IndieWire, Walken admitted that one of his first jobs was in a circus. That's right before he became a Hollywood star. Walken was in the spotlight as the lion tamer's son. At the age of 16, he encountered a large cat named Sheba. Now you may imagine Walken cracking a whip and instructing Sheba to perform tricks, but the reality was quite different. Walken described Sheba as more like a large house cat than a scary lion. He remembered how she would sit up and even bump his leg, demonstrating tenderness uncharacteristic of a wild animal. Despite the unorthodox nature of his early work, Walken has only positive memories of his time in the circus. He described Sheba as very sweet and stressed the bond they had. This encounter clearly had a lasting impact on Walken, changing his perspective on animals and possibly even influencing his acting style. He can definitely cook. Christopher Walken's youth was a distinct blend of flavors, influenced by his family's bakery and immigrant background. While his parents came from many corners of the world, they brought with them culinary traditions that were foreign to many Americans. Walken grew up in his family's bakery, surrounded by the smells of freshly cooked items such as cakes and pastries. Along with these delicious treats, Walken also had what he dubbed peasant food, meals like head cheese and oxtail soup that highlighted his parents' cultural history. Despite his exposure to this unorthodox cuisine, Walken evolved a more mainstream palate over time. He enjoys cooking a variety of cuisines, including Mexican and Thai, and adds molasses to his morning coffee for the taste. Interestingly, Walken prefers to cook at home rather than eat out, and he frequently skips dessert entirely. This dislike of sweets derives from his boyhood in the bakery, where he was surrounded by sugary delights. Even though he used to find filling jelly donuts to be a rather sensual experience, he now chooses to avoid dessert altogether. Legacy Christopher Walken's legacy in film is as vast and bizarre as the characters he plays. He's established himself as one of his generation's most recognized actors, winning people over with his variety and distinct approach. Walken, known for his cult following among film aficionados, has made an unforgettable impression on cinema. His performances as legendary figures, such as Johnny Smith in The Dead Zone, Max Schreck in Batman Returns, and Max Zorin in A View to a Kill, cemented his place in Hollywood history. Despite missing the role of Han Solo in Star Wars, 
Walken's performances have continually impressed both fans and critics. Walken's Oscar-winning performance in The Deer Hunter is widely regarded as one of the finest film performances of all time, demonstrating his incredible talent and range as an actor. Similarly, his performance in Pennies from Heaven is regarded as one of the best performances, and he should have won Oscars but did not, according to Entertainment Weekly. Walken is known as the King of Cameos, having made remarkable appearances in films such as Pulp Fiction, Annie Hall, Sleepy Hollow, and True Romance. Quentin Tarantino has lauded Walken's performance in True Romance's Sicilian scene as one of his greatest moments, emphasizing his ability to command the screen even in brief cameos. Walken's legacy extends beyond the film, with performers such as Benicio Del Toro, Kat Dennings, and Johnny Depp recognizing him as an inspiration. Renowned film reviewer Roger Ebert once praised Walken's unsettling ability to switch between charm and wickedness, cementing his reputation as a captivating and versatile actor. Despite his elevated status, Walken remains humble and dedicated to his work. He treats each part as a learning experience, rarely declining opportunities to push himself as an actor. While Walken may have turned down a few assignments over the years, his commitment to his art remains unshakable. Walken's unusual voice and speaking style have become famous, drawing similarities to other celebrities such as William Shatner and Garrison Keillor. He credits his distinctive speech patterns to his upbringing in a neighborhood entirely of immigrant neighbors whose many accents inspired his own manner of speaking. Aside from his fantastic acting career, Walken has inspired innumerable impersonators and performers. The stage production All About Walken, The Impersonators of Christopher Walken, honors his long legacy by highlighting the impact he has had on popular culture. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more exciting ones.